Hello, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I guess for some of you, it's good afternoon. We are digging into day two of connections to clients. And we're going to talk all about making better connections through email today. So if you're joining in today, I don't know what we're talking about. We have a three day free training called Connections to Clients. We started yesterday. And yesterday, we dug into why connections are so important for our business. I'm a huge believer and proponent of the idea that connections are at the core of a successful, sustainable business, profitable business. I really believe relationships are so, so, so incredibly important to our business. And really my whole business model, the strategy I use with my clients is relationship-based and based on human psychology, how we think, our buying behaviors, but also just the heart-centeredness and what human connection how that creates relationships because it absolutely translates into business. And just as a quick recap, we talked yesterday, Harvard Review did a study that, and hey, I don't know who just joined, we just are getting started. Just giving a quick recap of yesterday. Harvard Review did a study that in our business, those clients who are emotionally connected to us are worth two times terms of revenue over the lifetime of their time with us versus a customer who's simply satisfied. I think that's a really important number just to think about because we're talking in comparison to clients who are satisfied, which means they're already happy, but then adding in that emotional connection, that relationship, two times the revenue for us over the course of that relationship. That's massive. You can double your revenue by having relationships. So. It feels good, it feels better, it feels an integrity and heart-centered, and it can make us more money. So I think that's fascinating. Yesterday, we talked all about making better connections through social media, and we talked about some ideas through that. Our live stream video, I don't know what happened, y'all, went to go hit, put it up on the announcements, and it like, poof, disappeared. I was having, I don't think we're Mercury retrograde, I was just having a, a tech day all day yesterday with all the things. So what enough of you missed it and said you want to catch up on that so what we will do is we'll go through today day two we'll go through tomorrow day three three and then on thursday i'll hop back on and for those of you who missed it or those of you who want to see it again we will do day one all over again we'll just have a recap on it because i love talking about this so we'll do it again if you're live with me now or throughout the live say hi drop your name drop me an emoji say good morning, say whatever, or afternoon, because everyone who's live, I just need to know who is live, we're gonna enter all of your names into a raffle, and one of you will win a free 60-minute coaching session with me. We'll have a breakout coaching session. Any topic you want, dig into your mindset business. I don't offer single sessions anymore, so I think this is a, a pretty fun gift. So make sure you drop your name and let me know that you're here. And then we'll get started with day two. So we went long yesterday. We'll do my best to keep it a little shorter today, but I, I do get excited about this all. Let me know if this is helpful. And as we're talking, if you have questions, if you have reflections, share with me what's coming up for you. This is so much more enjoyable for me if we're having a conversation. I also, it's easier for me to know what content you're missing because sometimes I get on a roll and I don't realize what's missing. So just let me know what you want to hear, what you need to need to know. Kim, good morning. So happy to have you here. Nice to see you. And I'm, I know you missed day one yesterday, so we will definitely have day one all over again. So today is all about, I've got my coffee um, I think you're a coffee drinker too, right, Kim? So I've got my coffee with me this morning. Because yesterday, y'all, I drank coffee before we got on, and I was like ramped. So today we're going to ease into the coffee, so I'm not just speeding through this. So today we're going to talk all about making better connections through emails, using emails to build up. I like to call it a relationship bank. I've heard some other people talk about the idea of a relationship bank. So if we think about the relationships we have in our life, every time we spend time with people, we do something nice. Every time we connect with them, we put a little collateral, a little money into our relationship bank. And I think email can be a really great way to build up our relationship bank and to build up new connections, to build up our network. And today specifically, I want to talk about using email outside of funnels, outside of opt-ins, outside of, I love email marketing, I love content, but outside of that, because I think what happens in the online space when we're building a business is we get almost inundated with strategy and how to use social media marketing, how to use email marketing, which is great, but we almost forget some of the base ways, some of the old, I'm calling them the old school ways, but email hasn't been around that long, but email's been around for longer than social media. Some of the old school ways to build up connections and relationships, and we can sometimes disconnect because 
with things like opt-ins and funnels, we make them once and we're actually removed from them. And they're great, they work for us when we're not there, but we're not connected in the same way. So when we're talking about making intimate, emotional, heart-centered relationships with people, I think we sometimes forget the ways that are in front of us, the tools we have to build these relationships. So today I wanna to specifically talk about these ways we can connect without all of those strategies that are more directly connected. Sometimes it can be a little scarier that way. It's nothing brand new and mind blowing, but I wanna put some different spins on it. And I want to also, just because I also think a lot of us think we have to have a big audience to be able to make serious money in our business, and that's so not true. There, All those extra strategies and tools are great. Again, they help us with visibility, they help us grow our business, but everyone here can make a very profitable and sustainable business with a smaller audience. I think I told everyone yesterday, my first few clients, I had a social media following of 240 people. I think I had 30 people on my email list when I was first starting to book clients. So, and my audience still isn't huge. You can absolutely make a very profitable business, sustainable business without a massive audience. So that's what we're talking about today. I don't want everyone to get daunted. Emails have helped me over the course of my life. And when I was thinking about putting this training together, I was thinking about what are the things I used to do before I even started business that have helped me and that helped me at the start of my business and continue to help me. And what are the things that are working for my clients? So I'm going to talk through the types of emails that have helped me as well as my clients. But just to give some context, the types of emails we're going to talk about today. And I have, I said I had five for you all, but I have six. I have six emails and we're going to talk about how to make 150 to 250 new connections next year. But these emails over the course of my life have helped me at every stage of the game. They've helped me book acting roles when I was still acting. They helped me book agents. These type of um, emails helped me book my first job when I was in college. I worked as a, a research assistant for an author, which is really interesting. Side note, all about... we researched a book and I helped him co-author a book on happiness, um, helped him with all the editing on that. That never even went to publication, but pretty funny full circle. Um, these emails when I first moved to New York, I was talking about my experience when I had that gap year before I started my business. I thought I wanted to work in advertising and I worked in marketing and sales. These types of emails were talking about help me get my first job when I didn't know a, I knew five people in New York and I had no experience in my job. These emails then also helped me grow my business, get my get clients, get opportunities. They've helped me from everything to booking clients and making revenue in my business to having new opportunities like interviews, podcasts, um, speaking opportunities. So. That's what we're going to talk about. Now, I know as a side note, and who just joined, say hi, because y'all, everyone who is live, I'm entering your name for a free coaching session, but I need to know you're here. And it's not a gimmick to get you to comment. I just don't know how else to know who's joined live. So with before we dig into this, I get that personal emails can sometimes feel a little scary, because that's what we're going to talk to you about. That's what we're talking about today. I get that sometimes it feels a lot safer to hide behind our opt-ins, to hide behind the funnel, to hide behind the mass email that goes out to people we don't know. I absolutely understand that personal emails can feel weird, they can feel a little scary, but these are the emails that are going to help us connect so much faster because we can make them personal, because we can do the things that you can't do at scale when you take the time and effort to write personal emails. And I want everyone to think, so when some of those fears are coming up as we're talking through these different types of emails, and it's a little maybe scary to hit the send button, I have two thoughts. One thought is what my best friend and I, when I was still acting, would always come up with, which is what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that happens if you send this email? The uh, flip side of that is what's the best that can happen? And I like to think about what is one email worth? What is sending one email worth? Let's say you charge $5,000 for a program and you send one email that books you a client that earns you $5,000. Now let's say that one client is really happy with you and they renew and they refer one person to you who also books at $5,000 and then renews and that person refers someone else to you. Suddenly, if we trace it back one single email, I've lost the math there, what is that? That's 10,000, 10,000, that's 20, that's $25,000 from one email. Let's say you're not an entrepreneur and let's say you're looking for a new job and you send one email, one follow-up email that gets you a new job or that gets you an interview for a job that doubles your revenue. Let's say you are making 60K a year and you have an interview for what would double would be 120. Let's say it's for 100,000. Let's say it's just 100,000K a year. One email 
can be the difference between not making that or not making that. And so suddenly one email is, that's worth what, 50 to $60,000 from one email. And I, I know I'm oversimplifying that. I think sometimes we, and I, it's not all about the money, it is about the connection here, but I want us to think about that because I think sometimes we're so scared to send these emails or we think they don't work. And we don't also think about what's possible from sending one email. So let me know if that is making sense because I really want to encourage, inspire all of you to do that. So just think about what is one email worth in my business? What's the potential if I send one heartfelt email? All right, so let me, let me just pull my notes because I wanna make sure I don't lose things here. So today we're gonna dig into those five to six kinds of emails. In your playbook that you received, if you signed up for this, I have given you space. So what I think can be really helpful as we go into these different kinds of emails is to call, I called it a network email list, but a network list. But I think it can be really helpful to create a list of the people we want to stay in contact with, the new people we wanna connect with, and the wish list of our dream clients, and I'll explain each of those. Because what I find is if we don't have a list of people that we're gonna continually stay in touch with an email or reach out to who are new, this concept, this idea of sending these emails, it's like, oh, this is a great idea. We go to sit down on our computer and we email one person or we email two people and then we draw a blank and then we never do it again. And the magic in doing this is through consistently do this, doing this, is through that repetition, is through continually reaching out to people. So I find it really helpful to have this list. And this is something when I was in coach training, she called it a prospect list. And she went through like, who's the easiest to reach out to? Who's the hardest? You start with the easiest and then work up to the hardest. This is a, a variation on that. And so in your playbook, what I'm inviting you to do is to first brain dump, all the brain dump all the people you already know who are already in your network. And these can be business wise and also personal friends, family. So brain dump as many people as you can there. Then I want to invite you to go through people that you don't know that you want to reach out to. These might be people that you want to connect with for opportunities. They might be influencers. They might be companies or brands you want to have a collaboration with. They might be people you've noticed online, peers. I think those peer relationships are really powerful in our business. And then I left you space to brain dump. And this is something I think can be really powerful. So start to think of who is on your wish list for a dream client. Who have you noticed? Who's on maybe in your social media following? Who has emailed you? Who have you connected with? Maybe you've had a call with and they haven't become a client yet or that you want them to buy your course or they've shown up on your lives. Who's a dream client of yours that you want to connect with? Because those are also people we want to keep on our radar. And I have a special email for you for those people. We need to know who they are first. Otherwise, again, we don't, we don't do it. And with this, just in terms of the way I like to think about this, when I started my business, I took um, Melissa Sarah as one of my mentors, and she talks about, what she, call it? she calls it the email connection project or something like that. And she talks about the idea if, let's say we work 50 weeks a year and we send three emails to three new people a year, that's 150 new connections in a year. And I think if you send one email a day to someone new for five days, you say you work five days a week and you work 50 days a year, that ratchets that number up to, I think it's 250 people, unless I did my math wrong, which I might have. So if we're sending between three and five emails a week, that's it. And these are simple. These are short emails to people. We are either reconnecting or connecting to 150 to 250 new people in our business. And these are personal connections. Think of what that would do for your business in terms of clients, in terms of opportunities, in terms of revenue. If you even did a third of that, think of what that would do. My guess is if you take a look at this past year, you probably didn't reach out to a fraction of that number. Just think of what would happen if what's possible for you if you reach out to those people on a personal level. So that's the way we can start reaching out to new people where we're, we were talking yesterday about this idea of we when we build our audience, when we build our business and our network, we can be passive or active. We can wait for people to come to us or we can go to people. When we post something on social media, when we put up a link to our opt-in, we're asking people to come to us, which is great, but we can also take an active approach and go to people. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about taking very proactive approach. All right. So I'm just seeing if we have any comments and then just gonna give you one more caveat and then we'll dig into these types of emails. So just a reminder from what we were talking about yesterday, because I know we don't have the replay and some of you missed it. 
with these emails, with the social media outreach, with what we're going to talk about tomorrow, the reminder is everything we're doing is coming from a very genuine altruistic place. And it's not coming from this place of expectation. It's not coming from the place of fishing for clients. It's not coming from the place of seeing people with dollar signs over their heads. That is icky and gross. That's when things feel slimy and sleazy. That's when also people pick up that energy on the other end and it doesn't work. So when we're building connections, when we're building relationships, we really and truly want to think about it. Even if we're reaching out to potential clients, we're thinking about building real connections. We're taking that attachment and that need for a certain result to happen out the window, especially with potential clients. We always want to think about how can I empower, invite someone in and empower them to make their own decision? We're never convincing people. That's a whole different conversation. So we really want to come at these emails, at social media, at everything we're doing from this place. That's where it becomes heart-centered. That's where we bring a different energy in. That's also where we get the results, ironically, because we're not holding on and expecting something. And we're not, we can feel that on the other end. I know everyone has received emails like that on the opposite end. When someone just wants something from you, when you haven't heard from someone in a year and they just email you wanting something, it feels weird. It doesn't feel good versus when it comes from this really great place of relationship building. So hopefully that makes sense. But I think that's important to note, especially if you're connected with me, because if you're connected with me, my guess is that you are heart centered. And the last thing you want to do is be pushy or salesy or create any of that, um, that ickiness through our connections. We want them to be real and authentic. All right. So Let's dig into the types of emails. I'm going to just list them through and then I'm going to give you some examples of each so that you can really take this and implement this because I would love for everyone watching this now and on the replay to take this, implement this in their business. Everything we're talking about here is stuff that even with the holidays, you could do this in 15 minutes. You can still be touching your business and creating some results without having to do a whole lot, without having to spend five hours creating a new course or a new email funnel. So, these are the types of emails and then we'll break them down. And if you're joining live again, say hi, let me know you're here. And let me know if this is making sense and if you have questions, reflections, I love to hear it all. I love having a conversation about it. Okay, so the first email, really simple, I love it. It's actually really powerful even though it's simple. That's the thank you email. Then we're gonna have the stay in touch email and I'll give you examples on all of these. We have the invitation email. We have the follow up email, which I did a whole live on not too long ago, so I'll keep those examples short because some of you probably heard me harp on about these. We have the cold email, which I'm going to give you some examples. Holy shit, is the cold email powerful? It has been so powerful for me in so many ways. And then our sixth, I'm calling it the bonus email, is the connecting others email. All of these are beautiful ways to build connections and to create clients and opportunities in our business. All right. So the first one is the thank you email. And this is a pretty simple concept. I think this is, it's like writing thank you notes in real life, but we're taking an expanded view and spin on it. And I love this because I love gratitude. I love part of when I work with clients, I love encouraging people and singing people's praise. Gratitude is also, for those of you who know, we hear about it all the time. It's one of the most proven ways in psychology to boost our happiness and to boost our success levels. So there's so many extra wins from this email, but it also helps us connect with others, make them feel good, and it can increase client in, uh, increase our chances for clients versus from referrals. So this is very simply going through this is a great place when you look at your network list to go through the people you already know or to go through some of those influencers you might want to connect with or companies or brands you want to connect with. And it's very simply writing an email where you're connecting and you're thanking people for what they bring to the table. It's a quick email that says, Maybe it's to a mentor. Maybe it's to a client of yours that you're currently working with. Maybe it's a past client. I mean, what a great way to stay in touch with clients and past clients without saying, hey, buy something from me. To say, hey, I really appreciate you. I'm really inspired by that blog post you wrote. Or I loved working together because of these reasons. And it comes from this really genuine place there. We're bringing this beautiful energy in versus trying to connect with them and just like a drama business. Can you see the, see the difference there? I don't think I need to over explain this, but I really think this is a powerful email 
and it opens up that flow for conversation and then suddenly we're having an email exchange back and forth because we can also throw in how are they doing want want to hear some updates they want to hear updates from us and then hey look we're having a conversation like we would offline and i think what this email does is it mimics if you've ever been at a cocktail party or networking event and you want to meet someone new a great way to connect with someone new is to walk up to them introduce them introduce yourself or to find something you genuinely admire in them and to compliment them and that opens up the conversation and so this is mimicking that and i think it's just a really, really great way to connect with people through emails, strangers as well. I know when I receive emails like this, they make me happy. And I know other people do as well. Okay, so the next type of email we've got, because otherwise I over, over talk this y'all, is the stay in touch email, the creating those touch points so that we're staying in touch with people. And if you have an email list and you're sending out blogs and newsletters, that's essentially what we're doing through those emails. But this is doing what that does on a very personal level with, again, we're going through those 150 to 250 people we want to build either better connections with or new connections with. And it's, you know, it's, it's networking. That's what networking is all about. It's building connections and strengthening them. I think, what is the current stat? Someone's going to buy from us. They need to be in contact with us. I think it might be seven to 12 times now. It's different from the follow-ups. I forget what the, I'm, I get stat numbers mixed up in my head, but it's, it's that, it's also how we build deep connections and real emotional connections with people is by continually to, continuing to stay in touch and to stay in contact with them. We don't wanna be, I, I always think of it as, this is a horrible example, but you all get what I mean. We don't wanna be a one night stand in someone's life. For anyone who's ever been single and dated, in business, we want to build long-term meaningful relationships with people, not one-night stands. We don't want to be the one-night stand. We don't want to be that flaky friend who only shows up when they need something or that friend, fair weather friend who only shows up when they need something. We want to be that reliable person. So these are the emails where we reach out to the people we already know just to say hi. Maybe we're sending them an article. Maybe we're sending them a podcast that made them think of us. Maybe we're sending them a link to a quote that made us think of them. Maybe we're checking in because we know it's their kid's birthday or because we want to hear how their business is doing. This is all about staying in touch and it's all about the other person. So I think what's important to remember here is we're not just dropping a bunch of stuff about our business. We are really opening up that conversation like we would offline and we want to either share some value, not in terms of like, here's my business and how I'm doing, but let me be human and build an actual connection and either share something that might interest you or I wanna hear how you're doing. And what I realized at some point at the start of my business, I was getting results. I didn't realize where certain results were coming from. I was looking under the hood and I realized I was doing this, this is something I've just always naturally done. I've always, whether it's through a phone call or through a text message or through email, I've always just sort of, at the beginning of the day, I'm like, what friend do I want to talk to today? And I'll shoot a friend a text message, or I'll think of someone I'm missing and shoot them an email, or I'll hear a podcast that makes me think of someone and I'll send them a link to it because I think they'd love it. And so this is something I've always naturally done. And what I realized is because of that, I have these deeper connections with people who are, yes, in my inner circle, but also in that outer network circle, which means then when we do have something we want, need in our business, or when they have someone who's looking for what you do, you're either top of mind or it's natural to ask because you're not just asking for a request out of the blue because you need something, you've built up that connection and relationship. So I know this is probably a little overly simple, but I think simple doesn't mean we're always doing and implementing. So let me know if these guys, let me know if, I don't think we have any comments, though Facebook sometimes shows me 20 minutes later when I have comments, but let me know if this this is resonating, making sense. If you have any questions, if this is giving you any ideas. All right, so the next email is our invitation email. This email is gold. This is actually where we um, can see the results from connections to clients very quickly. All the other emails give us results as well because I don't know about all of you, but a big portion of my business comes from referrals not just what we're doing here, but a lot of my business is, is referrals. So, and from just opportunities that seem to fall into my lap, which is where these connections come into place, but also from this email, which is the invitation email. And I think this is magical. This is also the scariest email. So if you guys are listening, don't not do this one. Take a stand and take 
um, what am I trying to say? Step into your CEO mindset and be the CEO of your business and do the scary things. Do the things that are going to get you results. Don't just do the things that are easy and passive. Do those active things that are going to create results in your business. That's how we grow. This email is where we're going to go back to that list of our wish list of our dream clients of the people we already know that we love to work with maybe we've had some connections and for whatever reason the timing hasn't been right um, or maybe you've noticed them online or maybe you've had some conversation in a social media chat and you want to invite them to work with you you want to invite them to something or maybe it's an influencer and you want to invite them into your podcast or maybe it's um a some maybe you have a mastermind you want to invite someone into the group whether it's for a speaker as a speaker or as a member this is where we're doing exactly what it sounds like. We're directly reaching out to people. We're directly reaching out to those people and inviting them into what our experience is, whether it's to work with us onto a call or to be a guest on our podcast. And the point with this is we're not sending a mass sales email or a mass blast. We're getting very, very personal and we're making the email personal about them, about why, which can be very vulnerable. It's a lot scarier i get it because this is where i think when we send an email out to our list if we don't get a response we don't necessarily know everyone personally so we don't take the rejection the same way i absolutely get that these emails it feels like a personal rejection sometimes but the way i like to think of it is it's not even a personal rejection we're just inviting people we're inviting people and we're not expecting anything we're not pushing anyone we're always just inviting people and they get to choose if it's the right time they get to make their own decision and so it's not even a rejection. It's just if it's right for them or not right for them. But we have to make the invitation. And I think we can create so much magic in our business if we're willing to do these. And I did um, a beta, paid beta for a group program at the beginning of the year. And I it's a small, intimate group. I think everyone in that group came from a personal email or DM. That's how that beta was filled. So just to show you the power of what these do. I absolutely get clients this way. Sometimes there's you know someone I really want to work with and I let them know. And I've also been on the, just to um, talk about the fear that comes up around this, I've been on the receiving end of these. I've been on the receiving end of these and accepted them and I've been on the receiving end of these and rejected them. And I say rejected just because I don't have a better word for it. And I will say, every time I receive an email like this from someone, I think as long as it's done in the right way, I really appreciate getting them. When it's something I want, I'm so appreciative because sometimes it slips my mind or I don't realize I need it or I forget about the opportunity. And it feels so good to have someone say, I would really like to work with you, I, particularly you. It feels so good. And when it's something I don't want, it feels really good to have that connection and to be able to tell someone why it's not right for me. But I sometimes then will think of who it is right for. And I've done this before. I've had this, I've had someone reach out for me for something like this where it hasn't really been the right timing or fit. I file their name away and then I send them on to someone else where it is the right fit. So even in that case, it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity for us. I just want to see, I don't think we have any comments. All right. So I'm just trying to think if I had anything else I wanted to say on this one. That's it. All right. So again, do the scary thing reach out, ask, invite, go back to that list. And that's why it's so important to spend some time in that playbook with thinking of who these people are. Otherwise, we don't do this because we're not really sure who these people are. You need to sit down and identify them. And then once you do, you're starting to train your mind to also look for these people, which also means you're training your brain to look for opportunities in a different way than you might have been before. So I think there's a bunch of benefits just from even creating that list. Okay, so our next type of email is the follow-up email. I need a sip of coffee, you guys. My throat is dry. I need the caffeine. Can we also talk about how much I love this mug? It says something good. It just makes me so happy. Um, I think all my mugs have happy messages on me on them, and they they make me happy. As does my as does my coffee. Okay, so the follow-up email. I think this one is self-explanatory, and I did a live on this two weeks ago. Maybe two weeks ago, I'll have to pin it in here because I don't want to over talk what some of you all have heard, but I didn't want to leave this out of today's training because this is such an important email. So I will give a quick recap. This is, I think, the step in the sales process that I see most people pull back on and it's where most sales happen. So I'm going to repeat that. This is the step in the sales process that I see most people pull back on or skip altogether. And this is the step where most sales happen. And this isn't just me. This is stats. 
This is what I've experienced. This is what I've experienced with clients. We leave so much money on the table because we don't send follow-up emails. It is absurd. And I was talking about this yesterday. I think there's this tendency for us to think sales is all about making an offer and then we have that money exchange and that that's what sales is. But sales is a process. We go through a process and it starts way before we make the offer and it ends after we make the offer. And this is part of the process is the follow-up email or the follow-up. It can be a different different way. And I think this is when we're talking about connections to clients. This is one of those emails that can be so powerful, especially when we make it personal versus that mass email. Not that there's anything wrong with our email list and doing that, but again, I've been on the receiving end of this when someone has gone out of their way to send a follow-up email when I've been on their list and they've seen my interest and send a personal follow-up email. Holy shit, it's so powerful to be on the receiving end of that. And I find it, as a someone who respects business and people who are entrepreneurs and in business, I so respect people who do that. It never, to me, if it's done in the right way, feels icky or gross. I'm usually very grateful for follow-ups because I need them because I'm busy. And my inbox... If you're my client, you know, sometimes I tell you you have to reflag an email because my inbox gets drowned, drowned out. Anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. So I just want to share these stats in terms of the follow-up email, and then I won't over overshare on this one. But we talked about this in the live the other week, and I think they're important because I think sometimes stats take the emotion out and can make us understand something in a different way. So I was at a conference, a digital marketing conference earlier this year. I can't believe we're almost almost full year from when I was there. And Marcus Murphy was talking about sales process and he gave these stats. I'm gonna repeat them. You might have heard these already from me, but I'm repeating them because they're important. Only 2% of sales are made in the first contact. 2% of sales are made in the first contact. 10% are made on the fourth contact. So 10% on the fourth contact. 80% of our sales come from the fifth and 12th contact. Now, this is why this whole process we're talking about is important because some of these emails are just contacts. So that's the stat. But this is also why follow-ups are important because most of us are stopping after the first contact. Maybe we're making the second contact, which means we are missing 90% of our sales opportunity. That's kind of mind-blowing, isn't it? So. 80% of the sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact. And that doesn't mean we have to say, hey, do you want to buy from me? Hey, do you want to buy from me? Hey, do you want to buy from me? It's finding new ways to remain in touch, to connect with people, to stay in contact, and to ask questions and to find out what the objections are from people and to find out what people need to know to make their decision. This is playing the long game, y'all. Um, it's a short version of the long game, but it's part of that long game mentality. So I would wager, I guess, that most people, I don't even think most people are making it to the third email. I bet most people are stopping at the second. But just think, even if you're making it to the third or fourth, you are separating yourself from the pack. You are suddenly in a different class of entrepreneur because, and Murphy in his stats, he said that 48% of people never follow up. 48% of people. And 25% of people make one follow up and stop. So, and this is what we are talking about the other live stream, if you decide to put on your CEO hat, step into that role, embody that, and do the work that can be a little hard and scary, which is sometimes to follow up and put ourselves out there. You are separating yourself. You are, you are creating a blue ocean and differentiating in a way that's different than trying to be different just by showing up differently. All right, I'm going to get off my soapbox. I feel very strongly about follow-up emails. And I will say one of the reasons I feel strongly about emails, just to normalize this a bit, is I used to be terrified of them. I used to be fucking scared of them, and I used to hate sending them, but I've always sent them. When I was acting, that's how I got agents. When I started that job in advertising, part of, I worked in marketing and sales, so much of what we did was sending emails and follow-ups. They used to terrify me. So it's not like I'm saying this and they were super easy for me. Like I used to sweat in, we were in this shared office space and be so paranoid and nervous about writing these follow-up emails until they got and they got normal and comfortable and I started seeing the results whether it was from acting or in that job and then again it made it a lot easier for me when I started my business so I just say that to normalize if anyone else is feeling like I don't want to bug someone I don't want to harass someone all the different stories that come up normal 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 and do it okay that's my my tough love for today now I'm really getting off of my soap box because I could talk about follow-up emails weirdly for a very, very, very long time. Okay. Um, 
off my soapbox, I promise. Okay, so the fifth email is the cold email. So cold emails, they really excite me, strangely. I know that's funny, and I think cold emails, I wanna just talk to, I think we hear the term cold email and it immediately sounds cold because of the word. And it can sound icky, it can sound the opposite of heart-centered, it can sound salesy, it can sound, I don't know, pushy. It can also sound, I think a lot of us think cold emails don't work, or it sounds, I think some of us have had clients talk to me, if, uh, it's like the, what's it called, the the door-to-door -door salesman, like um, something that people old school, told you we're going old school today, like something people used to do but we don't do anymore. And I don't think that's true personally. I come from the school of thought and I have experienced personally and with my clients that cold emails are incredibly powerful. They can be very heart-centered. They can be incredibly connecting. And I have had some of the most magical things in my life my cat behind me, I see her shadow. Um, we might have my cat visit. Um, some of the most magical experiences in my life have come from cold emails. I think I've said that about everything we're talking about here, but these are all things that have created beautiful opportunities in my life and for my clients as well. So it's not just me, I'm seeing this for my clients as well. So that job I talked about when I first moved to New York, I didn't know anyone in New York, any five people in New York. And the way I got that job, and I talked about this yesterday, so I won't over talk about it, but I went on 40 coffee meetings with people I didn't know that I got through cold emails. And the woman I ended up working for, who I adore and love, I reached out to her through a cold email, followed up with her, met her, followed up with her, followed up with her, but that job came from a cold email. And I've been on podcasts because of cold emails. I've gotten clients because of cold emails. So I think cold emails can be really great. The way I think about them to take some of that the coldness out of it and to take some of the salesiness out of it is I think of it, it's no different than if I were at a party and I saw someone interesting I wanted to talk to who I didn't know, I would go up and say hi and start a conversation with them. It would be a cold connection. That's all a cold email is. Where There are people that we have seen, whether it's online or offline, that we wanna start a connection with, that we wanna build a relationship with, and we're introducing ourselves and we're starting that relationship. I think they get a bad rap because a lot of us have received cold emails where it's, I got one um, and I, I like bless their heart. I, I appreciate the effort. I'm not even dissing the company, but I got one the other day for an electric toothbrush. It's a cold email and I keep getting follow-ups and they're doing all the right things. And I actually really appreciate what they're doing. It just cracks me up because I don't know where I got on their radar for this electric toothbrush and it's a cold personal outreach email. So just, very funny to be, uh, to, to promote their electric toothbrush. Anyway, um, I'm not even dissing it. I really appreciate the effort, but I think we've been on the receiving end of cold emails that feel weird because it just feels like they're copied and pasted and people are just spamming us versus what I'm talking about and what I want to encourage everyone here is being really intentional and looking at that list of people we don't know yet that we want to connect with. So these can be potential clients, it can be influencers, it could be peers, it could be people that you want to have a friendship with. I think having more peers in our space are so, so powerful for so many reasons. It's a whole other conversation. But it's reaching out to people in a really heart-centered way, the same way we would if we were offline. I think you can reach out to brands. I, I know clients who get great collaborations, bloggers, for example, who get great collaborations through cold emails this way. It's in my eye, y'all. Um, so we want to reach out and in a cold email the same way we would if we were meeting someone for the first time. Meaning, how are you? This is what I noticed about you. This is why I'm reaching out. This is why I'm reaching out. Are you interested in building a relationship? If so, let's hop on a phone call. Or if so, check out X, Y, and Z. Or I thought you might be interested in this. Not copy and paste, I'm a business mindset business coach and here's my program, sign up. Like that's when it gets weird. Um, so hopefully you all understand the difference, but I really hope that talking about this today will if we look at those that email list and we look at the emails to send next year, I hope this will encourage all of you to get bold and send a few emails. Here's what I think is interesting about cold emails too, if you start doing them. There's something really exciting when you start seeing the results and getting results back. I've gotten speaking engagements in New York City from sending cold emails and there's something very like, oh my gosh, this works and how cool. I've met some amazing, incredible people, some of great people in my life, I would have never had the chance to meet them. Some of my favorite people, if I hadn't sent a cold email. And I think talking back to what we were talking about at the beginning, what's a single email worth? What is 
being ballsy for a second and sending that email and hitting send, what is that worth in terms of money or emotional satisfaction? I mean, one email, one cold email, truly over the course of that relationship can be worth tens, if not more, thousands of dollars. It can be worth $25,000, uh, $25,000, is that right? Yeah. Um, it can be worth $100,000. It's amazing how one email like this can change the entire trajectory of your life. That sounds dramatic, but I think about certain cold emails I have sent that have changed the entire course of my life because of the opportunity they presented. So I hope that encourages some of you. I don't know who's live, but you guys say hello. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Let me know if this is resonating. Let me know if this makes sense. Let me know who's here as well so that I can add your name to the raffle for a free call. Um, okay, so the last email, oh, this is, what I, this is what I wrote down in my notes to say, I think cold emails can actually be pretty warm. That's my cheesy line, but I really and truly do. I think they can be life-changing, business-changing. Okay, so the last email I have for you, the last bonus type of email, it was more just that I had this like cold list and I didn't want to stop at five. So we're doing one more. So. I don't know why I'm so excited about emails. This is so so weird, y'all, because I love mindset work, but this gets me. I think I get so excited about this stuff because I know the results it can create. I know, know, know the results for me and for my clients that this can create. And I also know how much mindset work is involved in getting ourselves to feel good about sending these and actually doing them because there's such a difference in hearing this and then taking it in and then doing it consistently. Um, but the last email that I think is fun to think about is the connector email. So I have a girlfriend in New York who is a very successful copywriter and she's a script writer. And she has amazing opportunities that seem to like fall from the sky for her, except when you peel back the layers, she is really good at what she does and she is an excellent networker. And she is constantly doing everything we're talking about here, what we we're talking about yesterday, what we're gonna talk about tomorrow, all of these types of emails, I know for a fact she does this on a regular basis. And one of the emails I know she sends, which is what gave me this email, it's one I like mm -hmm. to send as well, but I think it's such a cool way to connect with people and it's really powerful is the connector email. And this opens up a lot of opportunities for her and for other people. And this is why I love it because I think it's such an altruistic email and it's such a way that we get to feel good and we get to make other people feel good. So this is when we connect to other people so that it benefits them and not us. But we do get a fringe benefit. That's not why we're doing it, but I will, in case any of you don't wanna do it, I'll tell you what the fringe benefit is in a second. But this is when we think about this person and this person would work really well together. I know this person's looking for a job and this person's looking to hire someone. I know this person needs a designer and this person is a designer. I know this person needs a love coach and this person is a love coach. You guys get the, the example. I know these two people would be great friends and how great would it be if I could connect them so that they could have a new person in their network. I know this person's looking for someone to interview on their podcast and this person would be a great match. It's going out of our way to connect to other humans. What's great about this is two people get an amazing connection, which is what we're talking about here, connections to clients. They get this amazing result and we're the catalyst for that. We're doing something. I mean, this is we talk about in business all the time, right? Give value, give value, give value so that people then give value before ever expecting anything in return, before ever asking for a sale. This is giving value in a whole different way. And you better believe that you are giving value and you're gonna to be top of mind for those people as well. I'm such a big believer for anything we want in business, we need to give what we wanna get. If we want to get engagement on social media, we need to give engagement. If we want to, get people to invest at a higher level, we need to be willing to invest at a higher level. If we want to get people to give us referrals and connections, we need to be willing to give referrals and connections. We can't expect to get things we're not willing to give. And I think that's the mindset to take with these emails. And it's so fun to see. It's like matchmaking. It's so fun to see when these work out. Sometimes they don't, but that, and that's okay too. But I think it's such a, a fun way to send emails and a new way to send emails so we're not constantly sending the same types of emails. So what I will say with this, one thing to be mindful of, my rule of thumb is we always wanna check in with the other parties first to make sure it's okay to 
refer them. So I sometimes refer clients of mine who I know are great at what they do and I see opportunities. I always check in with them first. Is it okay if I refer you? If I have two people I want to connect for a job opportunity, I'm always checking in with both people. Is it okay if I send a connection email? Is it okay? Some people don't want their email shared. Some people don't want to be connected. So um, it does take a little more work for this email. I would just be mindful so that you're respecting other people's privacy and what they want before you send that connection email. But I think it's such a great, great, great thing to do. And just bringing it full circle to my friend that I was talking about, one of the reasons she's always getting opportunities is she just does this naturally. She's not doing it with any expectation. She's not doing it to get anything back in return. But you better believe all of those people she's helped when something comes up that would be a great fit for her, she's the first person they think of. And so that's why opportunities seem like they're falling out of the sky sometimes. Okay, just checking to see, oh, you guys, these comments come in so late. So Katie says, love hearing about some extra email tips after our call about emailing. I love, I know it's so, I was thinking about you with the cold emailing, hope it's okay that I'm saying you because it's so powerful and I'm excited to hear how those are going. Um, and yes, I've got some, I think it's fun just to talk about all these. And Kim says, love all this, Kim. Have to hop off to go to work, but appreciate all of this. Have a good day at work, Kim, and catch the end of this. So happy to have you here. So happy to have you both here and for everyone who's catching on the replay too. So just a few tips before I hop off because then I have a, oh, I have a call very soon. So to my client who I'm speaking with soon, um, I will be present, I promise. So I'm gonna wrap this up real quickly, but I just wanna give you a few closing thoughts for the emails. So first with email, double check, triple check people's names, make sure you're spelling them right, make sure, especially when you're sending the cold emails or outreach emails or connecting people, just check people's names. Um, don't copy and paste. Don't write a template and just copy and paste. Even if you are using a template, make it personal. Make sure to change a few things. And if you are, make sure your, um, this is such a silly thing, but highlight it and recolor it because otherwise what happens when you send copy and paste emails is it changes color in the email and people can tell. I can also tell when something is just a standard email that people have sent to a hundred people. That's not what we're talking about here. We do want to take the time to be a little more thoughtful. Um, but if you're using a template, I get it. And let's say it's more for um, reaching out to brands or something and you're being specific and you have a part like that's about you, just to highlight the whole email, uh, resize it and recolor it. So go into your color and make sure it's all black because otherwise it comes out like purple in Gmail, the parts that are copied. And it's very obvious on the receiving end and double check those names. Um, think about your subject heading. So we just want to think about what is going to have someone open our email, especially when we are sending emails to people who don't know us. So just think about your, just like you would if you were sending a blog, think about that subject heading, think about what you're going to say. Um, be personable and talk like a real human. Talk like you would to someone if you're meeting them in real life. I mean, this is real life, but offline. I think sometimes we get very professional and business-like and that's weird on the receiving end. Just be you, be normal. That's who they're going to connect with. So just remember that. And then the last thing to remember is to be short and sweet and to edit. Brevity, oh, what's the quote that I cannot think of? Um, my brain is frying. The brevity quote. But edit it down. So I've been on the receiving end of these. I, I don't mind getting emails like this. I've actually connected with people this way. But when someone sends me a novel, my eyes just glaze over and I don't read it. I also don't always have the time to read it. And you have to think about how many emails people are getting. And if they just see a long email, it's like their eyes glaze over. If you do have a longer email, break the text up so you don't have big, just like we would in a blog, so you don't have big chunks of text. So create a few spaces. It's just visually easier for someone who's reading. So if you do need to include information. Um, but edit, edit down, only include what's important, only include what's necessary, be ruthless. I have to do this with my blog every week. I have to edit usually about a thousand words out, believe it or not, and they're probably still too long. I'm an over, as we can see, I said it was gonna be half an hour today and we're way over half an hour. I'm an over sharer. So with these specifically, edit out, edit out, edit out, delete, 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 delete is your best friend. Less is definitely more. And then make it really easy for the person um, to get back to you, whether it's a cold email or just with a friend, make it easy for them to get back to you. I think that's something we always want to remember. Make it easy for, just like we want to make it easy for people to buy from us, we want to make it easy for people to stay in contact with us so they don't have to do any work. All right, I have to hop off because I went long and I have to attend to my clients now. So you guys, thank you for being here. This has been a lot of fun. If you're watching on the replay, let me know if you have any questions. If you're here and you have any questions, 
feel free to drop them and I will come back later on and answer any of those. I hope this will inspire and encourage all of you to send some emails. You can do this now and get results now. You don't have to wait until the new year. And then tomorrow we'll be back for day three. We're going to talk about some ways to connect offline. And I think those will be fun. It'll be, I swear it'll actually be short and sweet so that we can then get on with our, with our holiday time. And then we'll do the recap for day one for those of you who missed it on Thursday because it did not save. We'll make sure this saves. So thank you guys for hanging with me. Thank you for being here. Lots of love. Have a beautiful Tuesday. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.